Hello and welcome to The Witch Source. We are back with the May horoscopes and I have the wonderful Jessica with me from Starfish Astrology. Uh, Hi. You guys can check out more, uh, contact her uh, to learn more and uh, get some astrology done with her um, and give us your email again. Oh, it's starfishastrology at gmail.com. Okay. I thought so, but I wasn't 100% sure. I couldn't remember. So that's <laughs> cool. now, and we've got it. Uh, and you guys, I just have to say really quick before we jump right on in. Um, I went back over the uh, astrology that Jessica did for me um, last year. And I was, well, not quite a year ago, but I was looking at it and I'm like, my mind is blown at how spot on everything is. Um, especially in the last couple of months, everything has been so crazy accurate and unexpected. And you put on there that it'd be like unexpected. Um, and it has been completely unexpected, but it's been spot on and so just mind blowing. I'm, I'm blown away by how accurate it, it has been. So I just wanted to throw that out there before we get started. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, so we're going to jump right on in, uh, and I guess we're going to start with, what, Aries? Yeah, okay, so yeah, we're going to go through, um, if you're an Aries rising or an Aries sun sign, either one, it's um, usually, it's mostly, people mostly do their sun signs, I think it's in the last video, but you should definitely be looking into your rising sign when you're doing the horoscopes. So for all Aries and Aries risings, um, the first week of May kicks off with a bang as the lunar eclipse in Scorpio will highlight your eighth house of shared resources, debts, and one-on-one -on -one support. Um, any like story around those topics um, that has been forming over the past year, a year and a half, uh, is finally going to come to completion at the lunar eclipse on Friday, May 5th. Uh, the lunar eclipse brings revelations and this one makes it quite clear that um, the relational dynamics and patterns are no longer working for you. So this could also relate to like, you know, finances, relationships in which you are um, giving uh, too much of yourself to others uh, without getting anything back in return. And um, it's uh, clearing baggage and it's literally and metaphor metaphorically. But um, what's important is to keep in mind that you may feel rushed and energized to make big decisions around this time. But hold off if you can, as it does take um, time to fully digest the process and um, how you feel about it before you take action. The following week offers uh, some grounding because Venus will enter Cancer, your fourth house of home family, uh, on Sunday, the 7th of May. Um, that will bring fun, harmony, creativity to your home space. Um, it could also look like a time when your partner or loved one um, Oh, returns home from some kind of, you know, being away it could be for whatever reason, but it's like uh, reconnecting with uh, family members or loved ones. Um, then Mercury retrograde ends on the 14th of May. So uh, it finishes up going, you know, the backwards motion. And finally, um, it's going to be stationing direct, giving you, um, you know, the green light to move forward and any decisions you have around both travel or things with work. Um, Try not to rush into anything because Mercury is still going to be moving very slow for at least a week uh, following that point. Um, don't expect things to bounce back until around the 14th. If you're traveling close to the, the station day, the day that's going direct, um, you want to just be aware that Mercury tends to act uh, you know, kind of tricky when it um, at the beginning of a retrograde or at the end of a net retrograde. Um, so uh, Taurus New Moon is on Friday the 19th, and it lights up the part of the chart for uh, – you know, anything with fresh starts, new intentions, anything like that, off, things that are offering renewal. Um, maybe it's a good time to make a, to start saving for like a big trip later in the year, perhaps, um, you know, during Sagittarius seasons, like best time, your chart looks uh, time for good time for you to travel um, when your ninth house is uh, illuminated. So, and then on the 20th of May, your ruling planet Mars leaves Cancer and enters Leo until July 10th. And that's a, um, it marks the beginning of like a fun, tenacious period for like bolder, quicker, like Leo theme kind of actions, more confident things. Um, Leo is in your fifth house of pleasure and fun, entertainment and play. Um, so with Mars traveling through that part of your chart for the next seven weeks, you'll find it easier to have a good time um, and uh, which you desperately are deserving and um, needing. So a good time for travel as well. T sign up for activities, events, anything that makes you feel like having fun, getting out there, entertaining. And, and yeah, so that's it for Aries for, for the month of May. Yeah. Like you said, like hold off on having to make decisions at the beginning and 
try not to do too yeah. much before we get out of this retrograde and then, then jump right. In. Awesome. Okay. All right. So a fallout card here for Aries is uh, things starting to look brighter and better. So uh, again, if you are uh, Aries center rising, hold on, it's going to get better very, very soon. So know that. Let's see what else we've got here. All right. And okay, definitely uh, make sure this month for the for Aries that you do your study and research. Again, hold off on things that you're not quite sure about making any kind of decisions, um, but make sure you take the time while you're waiting and debating to really research whatever it is that you're interested in, whether that be the travel Justin talked about or any kind of decisions you have to make, make sure you thoroughly research it, okay? Um, that's gonna be the thing that's gonna give you more information to be able to make appropriate choices that are gonna take you in the direction you wanna go as you start to make changes. Um, and so while you might have this sense of wishy-washiness and unsure, uh, Doing this research and knowledge and making, uh, you know, just taking that extra bit of time to slow down and make a good decision is going to be the thing that really helps you take action towards the end of the month in a good direction and will help override some of this uh, unsure, wishy-washy energy that you might have going on towards like the middle of the month. All right. That's what I got. So hold on. These are going to get better. Good luck, Aries. Okay, so now uh, we're Taurus and Taurus rising. So if you're Taurus sun or a Taurus rising, it's a big month for you as uh, multiple planets travel through Taurus, your first house of your identity, your appearance, uh, it brings a spotlight straight to you. Um, the sun and retrograde Mercury form an alignment in Taurus on the 1st of May, allowing um, for clarity among like some kind of chaotic energy you may go be going through. So you want to pay attention to any insight you receive related to your creativity or sensuality, but hold off on taking any new steps until Mercury is no longer in retrograde. Um, a few days later on, Friday, the May 5th, the final lunar eclipse in Scorpio takes place in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Um, and it, it helps you to reflect on those areas of your life over the past year, a year and a half. Um, yeah, it's getting, this is a good time to really um, let yourself experience and process any kind of feelings um, over, you know, what, what you were going through in your relationship for the last year, year and a half. Um, if you're traveling during this time, try not to um, exert too much energy um, because the eclipses tend to um, keep us up at night, <laughs> um, which will throw off your natural like kind of rhythm. Uh, but on Sunday, May 7th, a major shift takes place when your ruling planet Venus enters Cancer until June 5th, opening the door for smoother and more pleasurable travel. Uh, Cancer's in your third house of uh, neighborhood, uh, transportation, language, and this could be awesome time for a road trip or you could find yourself traveling for work or for like a skills training kind of thing. Um, on Tuesday, May 9th, the sun forms an exact alignment with Uranus and Taurus and that um, a planet that is really slow and it's it's changing. It's been it's ever it's been changing to this new position for a long time now since 2018. But um, but it's all about change. So don't be afraid to change. You're more ready than ever to receive any kind of like shifts or changes um, implemented now. Uh, the 14th of May, you wanna that's when Mercury ends its retrograde in Taurus. So um. Mercury governs your finances and your spending. So, so in about five to seven days, you should feel comfortable making creative and financial decisions. On Tuesday, May 16th, Jupiter enters Taurus for the first time since 2011, marking a major shift in your life over the next year. Um, it's a huge, literally the largest planet in our solar system. Um, and it, it corresponds to abundance and good luck and gaining knowledge and just positive um, shift in your perspectives on things. So from this point forward, you can feel a little bit more relaxed, comfortable and confident in your body. And you may feel find it easier to connect with um, and find time uh, with your biggest supporters. Um, notice how much more present you feel in everyday life. Um, the Taurus new moon and Friday the 19th brings both luminaries, the sun and the moon into your first house of self, creating a beautiful opportunity for renewal. And um, since they're going to be right conjunct with each other, it's a really good time to feel peace with your with your body and your emotions, moon being your emotions and your then um, the sun being like yourself, your ego. So um, 
yeah. You, you Again, you might want to change some things up about yourself. You might find yourself splurging on like getting a haircut or anything that's like um, to put yourself in the best light, the best, you know, foot forward, um, how you represent yourself. So, yeah. So that's not, that's for May for Taurus, Taurus Rising. All right. Okay. So I've got a few cards here ready and I'm going to grab a couple more. All right. Let's see. Okay. So we had a few follow-up cards while you're talking, which is always fun. Um, and it's talking about um, energy coming back um, and starting to, to feel energized and feel better again. Um, and, and that's going to be coming back. So if you've had this feeling, um, anybody who's a, a Taurus then or rising, um, of just not feeling right, not feeling yourself or feeling like slowed down or held back, that's about to change. So there's going to be a lot of energy and a boost of energy that comes forward. And an opportunity to really feel free for the first time in a while, like really independent almost. And like you're finally able to uh, just break out of your shell a little bit and get going some more. Um, it's also going to be an opportunity coming up to actually take on and take action towards what you've been desiring, what your dreams are, what your goals are. You're going to have an opportunity to do that. Okay, so. The biggest thing to know is you want to be careful not to fall into the negativity trap um, because that's that's showing up. So when your emotions do start to to show up around the, the moon, make sure that you're trying your best to stay positive and stay away from any of those negative thoughts that are going to bring in on any kind of uh, depression or anything that could potentially make you upset or uh, worry or um make your mind drift backwards into the past. Try to stay very focused and present and positive. Um, and there is some good coming in here soon. That rescue energy is coming up and showing up. So take care of yourself, love yourself, do something for you. Uh, and putting that energy forward of loving yourself and I'm going to do something for me will be met with something good and positive brought back to you from the universe as well. So go ahead and put that out there and get that energy back. Just keep Keep, keep your mind straight, keep your emotions in check uh, and try to stay positive as best that you can and know that your time's coming for some freedom, some happiness and getting to take action on those dreams. I, I'm a, a Taurus rising, so that totally relates with what I'm going through. I've been on this like weight loss journey for a while now. I've been exercising every single day consistently since the first of March. So I'm like really, um, and it's the negative thing that I'm always trying to push away, trying to like, you know, so it totally resonated with me. And let me just say, I love when the cards fall out. I always feel like that's like a special little, you know what I mean? Anytime yeah. someone's in there reading the cards, like kind of flip by themselves or fall out, I'm always like, yes. I'm always like, you know what I mean? It's always like, that's supposed to, you know what I mean? So I really feel it. Um, that was, that was awesome. It totally resonates. Okay. So Gemini Risings and Gemini Suns. Um, the first week of the month, and uh, we're talking for May, um, is going to be busy um, as your ruling planet Mercury forms an exact alignment with the sun while in retrograde. Um, so uh, because this takes place in the 12th house of solitude and escape, uh, quiet moments and, you know, contemplating with yourself and what's going on are likely to be um, really helpful in getting you, letting you get insights of what's going on in your life. Um, it, um, let's see. Um, it's an excellent time to be, uh, if you're going to travel to travel solo, especially like if you just want to go out and get in nature as, um, as you'll need like solitude to gather your thoughts and process your feelings about what's going on. Um, it's a lot going on for you guys, the very beginning part of the month, but you want to give yourself time and space that, um, that you can digest and just process mentally and physically, whatever you're going through on Friday, May 5th, a lunar eclipse in Scorpio will supercharge your sixth house of work. Uh, finally bringing a cycle that began back in November, whatever happened in November of 2021 for you, um, is going to be coming to a close. So, so yeah, you could be saying goodbye to a job or starting a new one or facing a revelation on which you decide like where you want to take your career or, or your work life. Um, you want you want to take uh, your time to, um, you know, integrating these changes throughout your uh, the remainder of the re retrograde um, is the energy shifting, but. 
you want to bend, prepare to slow down as your ruling planet stops to pivot and move forward. It's going to start going direct. And so there's, this is just like a process you're going to have to do like internally with yourself and figure out exactly what you want to do. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, May 16th, Jupiter joins Mercury. Um, so this is a major shift in your life as Jupiter governs your career and relationship house. So, um, if you are a partner, this might be uh, a time where there's changes in like your partner's work, whatever they're doing for work, and that they might be just busier than usual. Um, but changes in your career could look like um, they're going to be um, you're going to be wanting to do like charity or humanitarian kind of work and makes you, you know, just take you out of your everyday thing. And it's going to be um, it removes you from your everyday day-to-day -day life and maybe just like a break from that and just working with other people or helping others you're going to want to do um either way you're looking at a time where you'll become more focused on healing in your inner world so that like obviously if you're helping others it helps you um but and that's supported by the new moon on friday the 19th of may which offers renewal and a fresh start to work on these themes um and then gemini season will kick off on sunday um may 21st when the sun enters your first house and begins to light you up from the inside out and expect to feel more confident and uh, less untethered. Um, the spotlight is on you for the next four weeks. So at that point, you'll be basking in a uh, Gemini season. So good luck to you, Gemini. All right. And I had a, a whole chunk just fall out. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Yeah, a big chunk just dropped. And I was like, oh, okay, they've got something to say. <laughs> okay, so um, don't be afraid to uh, get out there and, and be seen, take some action. Um, so we have the first card starting off with this big chunk that fell out here. Um, Gemini being, uh, don't be afraid. So don't. Don't be in fear. So if you're uh, nervous about being seen, if there's something that you're afraid of or how it's going to work out, just know everything's going to be good. There's no reason to be afraid. There's nothing to fear. So go ahead and do what it is that you want to do. Um, they're saying um, make sure that uh, you are taking time to slow down and just bask in the moment, be by yourself, love yourself, make things slow and spend that time with you. Um, and don't let other people come in and kind of wreck your party. Um, make sure that you're, you are the one that is shining on your own without uh, having others coming in and trying to take over or tell you what to do or what's best for you. Um, really take, take care of yourself and set your boundaries so that people don't come trampling on your, on your good because you are doing your good for yourself. Uh, lots of good blessings coming your way. Lots of happiness and joy showing up. Um, again, make sure that you don't let anybody steal that from you. Don't let anybody steal your sunshine. Um, but you definitely have lots of uh, happiness coming in, lots of blessings coming in specifically. Um, and this is going to be like a lot of really good happy days in a row that you just feel good. You feel on fire. You feel um, just really joyful. Um, that's what you're going to see coming in. And there's going to be a uh, this energy of like a, a fresh new start. So like a um, you're going to be getting over this like releasing period of letting something go. And then it's like, bam, you're going to have this big expanse of letting the new come in and the happiness come in. And like you're ready to take on the new and start something fresh um, and just for yourself even. So, uh, yeah, enjoy that time. I think it's going to be really good for you, Gemini. That's awesome. My son's a Gemini, so I'm excited for him. Um, okay, so Cancer Suns and Cancer Risings. Uh, May kicks off with a busy first week for you guys um, by the lunar eclipse in Scorpio on the 5th of May. Um, as a Cancer Rising, um, obviously you're ruled by the moon, so lunar eclipses are very intense for you. Um, they're often uh, coinciding with like big revelations. Um, but this one falls in your fifth house of play, fun, sexuality, creativity. Um, so eclipses have been activating this part of your life for the past one and a half years. So um, this will close up that cycle, allowing you to implement lasting change. Uh, maybe you'll find out about a new creative project or you'll have a realization about, you know, uh, change and like uh, just you want to just it's going to be a good time, to, you know, release what is to release whatever is not working for you any longer. Um, let's see if you find yourself traveling this time, you're going to want to 
follow your heart's desires with some caution as you could feel especially exhausted, vulnerable, and drained this weekend. Uh, on Sunday, May 7th, Venus, the planet of pleasure, art, and beauty, enters Cancer, your first house of identity appearance, where it will remain there until June 5th. Um, and Venus brings uh, grace and ease and aesthetics uh, directly to you. And it's the first house of your appearance, your body, your ego. Um, so spend time on your appearance and with activities like, you know, put a face mask on, you know, so you're going to want to make yourself look pretty and, and uh, you know, go shopping and things like that. Um, and, you know, indulge in yourself. Uh, let's see. On Sunday, May 14th, Mercury finally ends its retrograde and stations direct in Taurus. And that's in your 11th house of friends and community groups of people. So if you're thinking about taking a trip with friends this summer or fall, move forward with planning. Don't rush, though. Uh, Mercury's still moving very slowly for about a week or so after it goes direct. So take your time when booking your activities. Um, let's see. Um all this is uh, underscored by refreshing Taurus new moon on the 19th of uh, fr uh, Friday, May 19th, inviting you to set intentions around the type of community you'd like to grow and foster around over the next year or so. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, Gemini season will kick off on the 21st of May, and that's going to bring the sun into your 12th house, and that's going to make you want to have time for solitude. Um, you know, contemplating on things. So if you're craving like, a, you know, a, a moment to like uh, get out of Dodge, I'd say the next four weeks present um, uh, present a good opportunity to uh, disconnect from the outer world and reconnect with yourself. And so that is for all cancer and cancer rising. So good luck to you guys. And um, yeah, I'm jealous that you guys have a, uh, Venus in your first house. So you always look, you know, anytime anyone, and I'm doing readings for people and I see that they have like Venus right on their ascendant or like around their first house, I'm always like, they're going to be very pretty. I think yours actually is like, it's like yours or your sister's. One of you two have Venus right there. I'm like, they're, you know what I mean? It's just always very, very, you know, good looking. And it's a good time. And when you're doing horoscopes, it's always like, oh, it's, you know, they're going to be, you know, putting time into their parents and they're always going to be like, you know, looking stellar. So lucky. Cool. So good okay. cancer. All right. So I had quite a few actually fall out. So here we go. We had the first three come out um, immediately. And these three are talking about um, honesty and giving back to yourself and returning to who you really are. So um, just make sure that you're being uh, yes. Okay. And that's going to bring you so much joy and happiness when you are just genuine, just be who you really are. Just be true to yourself. Um, take care of yourself, put you first, let you be like, get in touch with that child part of you, that inner child. Um, like, what did you like to do as a kid? Like, who did you see yourself becoming as a kid? Who was that carefree, happy person that you were before the world started to pile up all this, you know, stuff on top of you and stress on top of you um, go back to who that person is and get in touch with that person and spending time there is going to bring a lot of joy and happiness for you um, anybody in uh, cancer sun or rising again that's it's really great you're going to end up like if you will take the time to do this and just be genuine and authentic you're going to be so happy with yourself and happy with what comes from that so it's really going to be worth it um, the next little section that dropped out here uh, is using your mental agility. So staying very mentally strong and making sure that you are choosing what your brain is doing, that your brain isn't running on autopilot, that you're not allowing your brain to take you in your mind to places you don't want to be, whether that's reliving arguments, reliving the past, uh, thinking about things that you can't change, things like that. Don't let your brain wander in these areas. You want to keep your, your mental strength, think, strength strong um, so that you can think clearly uh, and be able to say no what you want you, to what you want to say no to. Uh, when you match that with the surge of energy and that boost that's coming your way, when you pair those two together, it's like you're going to be able to accomplish anything. Whatever it is that you want to do, you're going to be able to make it happen. Um, so just make sure that you, again, stay strong, use your energy wisely, use your brain wisely, and you can make things happen. It's also talking about what are you passionate about? Go ahead and like dive into that. Your passions are here. Uh, whatever that looks like for you, art, music, 
um, writing, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you are into, um, that's what you want to dive into and put this energy towards because it's going to really benefit you in the long run. Uh, and you're just going to be really happy. You're going to get a lot out of it. So I see nothing but really good things uh, coming up for the month of April for cancer. So uh, enjoy. Oh, good luck, cancer. Okay, so next, Leo, Leo Risings. Okay, so um, we enter May in the middle of the eclipse and Mercury retrograde, leaving you a little time to catch your breath after a very busy April. Um, the first week of the month is lit up by an intense lunar eclipse in Scorpio, and that's in your fourth house of home, family, ancestry. Um, lunar eclipses tend to bring, like I said, big revelations, and this eclipse is like is the last one of the series in Scorpio over the last past uh, year and a half. So you're presented with an opportunity to reflect on the ways uh, in which your home life or your relationship with your family has transformed. Um, whether you moved, reconnected, or lost connection with family, learn more about your ancestry or otherwise this eclipse will offer a powerful moment of reflection and just uh, contemplate everything that's been going on. Uh, Mercury is still in retrograde. Hold off on acting on the choices right away. Um, see how, how everything is after the dust settles uh, over the next two weeks. On Tuesday, the uh, 9th of May, the sun, which is your planetary ruler, will form an exact alignment with Uranus, um, which is the planet associated with uh, unexpected changes. So expect unexpected around this time and try to find your center and readjust as you move forward. For, um, because Uranus brings necessary changes that will more often um, than not accelerate you into the next stage of your life. Um, because this takes place in Taurus, your 10th house of career, uh, job, career, um, and recognition is highlighted. It's possible that this shift could look like a surprising new opportunity to be seen for the work that you've been doing. Um, on Sunday, May 14th, Mercury, which governs your finances, spending, and income, will finally station direct after its three-week retrograde in Taurus. You can feel more confident moving forward with important purchases, uh, but wait about a week or so if you can. Um, the wildest days of retrogrades when it starts and ends, right, because it's kind of dragging, even though it's going to be going direct. Um, so give yourself a little buffer time. Um if you're traveling during this period, give yourself more time, a uh, bigger budget, put some money aside um, just for things that you might need. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, it's, it's a year long transit through Taurus beginning this month. Um, it connects those things to your profession, making an excellent time to say yes to new career opportunities. If you're an artist of any type, the next 12 months allow for your work to be um, recognized and celebrated. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and this is underscored by the Taurus new moon in um, on Friday, the 19th of May, which will bring a fresh sense of renewal and regeneration. Um, so this is a good time to figure out like what you want to be known for, what parts of yourself are most exciting that you want to share with the world. Uh, the new moon is a uh, green light to move forward and do all of those things. So good luck to you, Leo, Leo Risings. All right. All right, Leo, no fallout cards for you. So let's see. Hmm. Where do we land? Okay, so wow, um, here we go. So Leo, um, it's talking about like making sure that you are um, staying connected to spirit and source as far as going after what it is that you want. So whatever it is that you uh, want to accomplish whatever your goals are, whatever, you know, that you want to go after and put out into the world and make yours, right? Make sure that you're staying very connected to your, to your ever, whatever you believe, whatever your spiritual higher power is and ask for the guidance and help and make sure that you're bringing that extra boost of energy in um, because it will assist you in accomplishing what you want. So, um, Make sure you're keeping that connection wide open. Um, so what this looks like is listening to your intuition and um, taking action on your intuition and listening to yourself and your own inner guidance. Trust on your own inner guidance more than the outward guidance of others. So uh, Leo's, I don't think you typically like to listen to what other people have to tell you. You like to take the lead on your own uh, and do your own thing. So just keep doing that. Don't let these people like make you second guess yourself at all. Go ahead and take charge and do what you know is best. Um, and then you're gonna make it happen and it's gonna be a good thing. So it's kind of just a, uh, 
backing up what you are, what you just said, Jessica, like picking what it is that you want to put out in the world and going for it. And as long as you're staying open to source for that support and guidance, it's going to happen. So yeah, you got this. Oh, good luck, Leo. Okay. Virgo, uh, Virgo risings. Okay. So Mercury is uh, your, your planetary ruler um, spends the first two weeks of May still in retrograde motion. So things are moving slower than you'd like them to take deep breath and just trust the process. The Scorpio lunar eclipse on the 5th of May um, will activate your communication sector. And uh, one of the best pieces of work may uh, merge during this, the first or second week of May. Um, and the stars and the position of the planets energies implore you to take time to celebrate yourself instead of acting like, you know, it's not a big deal, like be proud of your accomplishments. Um, Jupiter, you know, which is, like I said, the planet of luck, um, it enters your fellow Earth sign of Taurus on the 16th of May, opening up a 13 month window for you to give more attention to the world of either um, anything uh, regarding travel, philosophy, media, education, publishing, entertainment, you'll feel ready to redirect your resources towards um, th those realms of your life. But since Mercury retrograde post shadow period will be felt until the end of May, you're encouraged to take things step by step and do not rush the process. So good luck to you, Virgo suns, Virgo risings. Okay, so short and sweet, but I, I like it. Um, yeah. So Rooster is a, is a Virgo, and it totally makes sense for where we're at in the process of getting the tattoo and woo shop open. Uh, <laughs> very slow going, so, uh, and he, he is, he's getting frustrated, and he does tend to, like, downplay what he accomplishes. So I think My birthday is He's a Virgo too. And it's the same thing. It's like um, so much attention to detail, wanting to be just right, just wanting it, you know what I mean? And not being like stepping back and being like, well, I did that. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah, it's totally a Virgo thing. So, and then, you know, everything that they've accomplished, it's like, you know, acting like it's no big deal, but it's like, yeah, you've got to like, just take time to celebrate yourself and you know what you've already done and just, you know, take it with a grain. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Let's see what's in the works for Virgo. What do the cards have to say? All right, awesome. <laughs> so funny because it's very close to what you're saying, Jessica. <laughs> so we've got a new thing starting, uh, fresh new starts and beginnings, um, being bringing these new things that you are starting and working towards are going to bring in a lot of joy, a lot of peace, a lot of uh, balance and harmony. You're creating a lot of good right now um, for yourself. And that's what you're, that's what you're working on. And it is saying you have to approach this work very joyfully um, and taking it one day at a time, one step at a time, um, being very thorough in, in what you're working towards because you are setting yourself up for your, your good. Um, so it's going to have very long and far reaching effects what you're building right now. So take your time, do it right. That's definitely here. And when you do that, you're going to have some very serious changes uh, come your way that are going to be very, very good. You're literally in process right now. It feels like during this month of May, it's extremely important because you are literally at a tipping point of completely changing your world for yourself. Um, you have an opportunity to really up level in life, change things for yourself. These are really big, big changes in life. And you're building up to this, becoming something permanent and stable in, for yourself in your life. Um, but also the knowledge and the wisdom that you're gaining from this experience as well. That's extremely important. It's going to serve you well in the long run. So everything that you're creating, all the the uh, the resources, the connections, the um, just the the knowledge from this experience, everything that you're learning from this experience, it's going to serve you so much in the long run. So please, 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 Virgo, Sun, and Rising, uh, take your time and, like she said, enjoy the process because it will be very far reaching. Yeah, definitely. They take time to enjoy your um, accomplishments. Yeah. So. Yes. Okay, good. And that may totally resonated. Um, okay, so Libra, Sun, and Libra rising. Okay, so Libra, 
this eclipse month is all about getting clear about um, what your non-negotiables are. Um, the Scorpio lunar eclipse on May 5th activates the sector of your chart, which is associated with like money and self-esteem. It's the second house. So you may decide that you want to make money in a completely different way than you've been making it the past six months. Um, try to wait until next month before making any life-changing decisions um, that you may rethink later due to the, you know, the ending of the retrograde, Mercury retrograde. Um, this may be easier said than done, though, um, because Mer because the eclipse energy tends to change situations in our lives, which we all know, whether we're ready or not. So uh, on May 7th, your planetary ruler, Venus, enters Cancer for four weeks. So you're not always as comfortable with Cancer energy due to um, heightened sensitivity. It makes you feel. But on top of that, Jupiter enters Taurus on the 16th of May, two days after Mercury retrograde ends in the sign of Taurus. So Taurus energy can also throw you out of your comfort zone by forcing you to be more practical. Um, this month is therefore uh, about learning uh, how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable for you. So not, not the, um, yeah, so you just got to go with it, um, Libra, and good luck to you. And, you know, Libra is ruled by Venus, and it's can't always have, and there has to be some kind of negative, I mean, some kind of like, you know, if everything has like positive, negative, and it's like, you know, it's like um, being a Taurus rising, a Taurus is also ruled by, by Venus, and it's like, you know, you can't always just have, you know, all the comforts, it's like, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of Taurus risings tend to be overweight, which I am, and it's like, because um, ruled by Venus, you always want, you know, what's pretty, what feels good, what's comfortable, you know what I mean? And it's like, there's also a downside to that because if you do that all the time. It just, it's not a good thing. So uh, Libra is kind of in the same boat in that regard. So good luck to you, Libra. All right, Libra, <laughs> we had some fallout cards. So here we go. All right. So <laughs> We have the card of love showing up uh, oh, here. Um, and it's talking about the potential for new love or deepening the love that you have. So there's going to be an opportunity here to just take your relationship um, to the next level, kind of making a new leap for yourself in the romance section. Um, and, you know, if you're not in a relationship, keep your eyes open because you might be uh, starting a new one here soon. Um, you know, and if, if you're just completely not interested, then I would say, you know, uh, make sure that you're taking your self-love to the next level. Um, but I, I definitely think that if you're in a relationship, uh, it's going to be advancing here very soon um, to a deeper level. And when you incorporate your own inner magic and what you bring to the table, when you actually focus on how can I love more? How can I love deeper? How can I love um, on a, on a, just a, a, a deeper level, right? Like I don't really know how else to say it. It's like really taking that in and you being proactive with, with this. So you'll feel the start and the shift in your relationship start. And then when you meet that and you match that energy, you're going to make it that much better by bringing your own natural magic um, to the, to the front. Uh, okay. So then you've got a balancing. So make sure that with this deepening of your relationship that you have going on, that you also don't forget yourself um, because it's going to feel good. It's going to be great when you are really just so wrapped up and involved in this relationship and they make you feel so good about yourself and you feel so good about them and everything just feels so good. Don't forget yourself as well. Okay. Don't get lost. Uh, don't let the lines between who you are and who they are blur too much. Um, you want to do keep a level of independence for yourself. Um, so make sure you're just staying balanced. Okay. Don't keep your feet on the ground. Don't, uh, don't go floating off with this, uh, romance. Uh, okay. And then, uh, okay. So we, again, and so I've got two more cards here and they are, uh, the indecision. So just make sure you're again, staying balanced and, and who you are and just taking action on this. Like you have an opportunity to make your, your love, what you want it to be. So do it. Go for it. All right. I think it'll be All good. Right, good luck, Libra. Yeah, I think so too. Libra's always, they always land on their feet. So who, um, more, uh, more, um, let's see, intense is the next one. Scorpio sun and Scorpio rising is on you guys. <laughs> it's going to be a, an intense one for you. Um, okay. 
Yeah. Scorpio, um, your annual full moon takes place on May 5th, but it's not a regular full moon. It's an, a lunar eclipse in your sign, meaning it has the power of 10 full moons combined. So um, this month is about surrender. Yeah. Regeneration. As much as, as much as you'd like to feel in control, many elements will be out of your control this month, uh, especially in how much you're going to be going to be a lot of you're going to uh, there's going to be some tears this month. So and um and it's not but that they're not happening for a reason. There's going to be a reason. Ever since the solar eclipse full moon took place in your sign on October 25th, 2022, you've been going through a tremendous spiritual awakening. And this eclipse will lead to your um, catharsis reaching its peak. When you combine this eclipse with Venus presence in Cancer starting May 7th, followed by Jupiter's entrance in Taurus on the 16th, which um, activates your partnership marriage sector for 13 months, you'll feel like you're experiencing um, like an inner tsunami feelings, emotions, and everything like that. So, and on top of this, your ruler Pluto spends its first full month retrograde in May. So talk about nonstop transformation, Scorpio. So um, your saving grace this month is your ability to find humor in situations that would otherwise, you know, have you stressed out. But once Mer Mercury retrograde ends on the 14th and the Taurus new moon occurs on the 19th, you'll be in a much better headspace, allowing you to move forward with uh, greater clarity. Just remember, Scorpio, eclipse season is here to help, not to harm us. So you'll get through it. Just, you know, stay uh, stay strong, Scorpio. Scorpio Risings. I'm a Scorpio Rising, so. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot. You guys, there's a lot of big, uh, for Scorpios, there's a lot of big things happening in May. So, whew. step back, take your breath. Go <laughs> Sorry, I forgot your Scorpio rising. I should have made that more, a little bit more delicate. I'm sorry. Don't, but yeah, that's what's no, going on. Okay. Uh, it's true though. Like there's, I can feel like on the edge. I feel like right now I'm in like a mini limbo space. I'm like right, yeah. I'm teetering right on the edge of something big happening. And that's what it feels. It feels like everything's being drawn out and taking its time right now. And everything's moving very slow. But it feels like I'm reaching yeah. that tipping point of. Right. Yeah, now yeah. There's a, there's a lot of big energy for you guys this month. I mean, a lot. So I mean, next month. But yeah, so I'm a Scorpio moon, so kind of, but not as nearly as much as like both of my children are Scorpio rising. So it's like great. So yeah, wow. that's, that's a rough month. So, yeah. good luck, Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. All right, Scorpio Risings. That includes me, and there's one fallout already. <laughs> Let's see what else. Okay, so the fallout card is your intuition. So I'm going to say Scorpio Rising, your saving grace through this month is going to be trusting and listening to your intuition. It's going to be the thing that really helps you. Uh, let's see what else we have going on. Wow. Okay. Uh, so also cards. Here we go. Uh, Scorpio, Sun, and Rising. We've got a lot of magic happening. And this is outer magic. So this is not the magic that that you are intentionally creating or your inner magic that you're bringing forward. This is all external magic that's going to be happening around you. So a lot of changes, a lot of shifting, a lot of things swirling around you. And you're actually going to feel that energy. I, you're going to see that uh, taking place in your life as all these like magical things start to happen around you. A lot of changes coming in. Uh, as we look at the alchemist here, who's about making uh, very deep, permanent, serious transitions, transformations and changes, right? I mean, that's what alchemy is all about uh, is transformation. So that's here as well. Uh, right along here with the uh, intuition magic. We also have uh, energy. So this is like that wild chaos energy. Energy. So uh, you might feel, and that includes me, we might feel that all of this magic and change and transformation is a little overwhelming, and we might want to spiral into that chaos area that we uh, sometimes thrive in. So be careful uh, of that. It's saying, um, go to your books, go to your study, go to what you know, check your facts, check your details, dig in deep on uh, double checking whatever's going on and just making sure that you're learning through this process as well, um, that it's not just happening to you, that you are actively participating in what's going on. And also it's okay to lean on your friends. Okay. So we've got a 
friendships here are going to be important this month. Um, so it's okay to lean on friends or, you know, have those conversations when you feel like you're just going to drown in what's going on with you. Go reach for that life support, that, that uh, bona friend. Okay. So it'll help get you through this month. But yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty big one for the first Scorpio. So good luck to you, Scorpio. Yeah. Uh, next, yeah, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a rough one for Scorpio, at least for the, you know, for the month, but then it gets better. So Sagis, Sagittarius sun and Sagittarius rising. So Sagis, um, the month of May is going to be significant for you for a few reasons. One, um, Pluto known for its transformation begins its retrograde in Aquarius, activating your communication sector. So with both Mercury and Pluto, um, retrograde as the month begins. It'd be wise for you to just be careful with things you say. Don't just blurt things out, whatever comes to mind, because um, you could uh, hurt people's feelings, just cross wires. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, Sagittarius is the centaur. It's like half horse, half, half man, and has the bow and arrow. Uh, and they say that Sagittarius, um, their tongues are like, the, the arrow represents their tongues. So they kind of like will say things that are like, you know, so just even more so. So you want to be careful with things that you say, um, especially the beginning of the month. Um, now the Scorpio lunar eclipse on the fifth is an opportunity for you to deepen your spiritual relationship with yourself, with your family, your ancestors, um, your sector of closure, security, and healing is activated by the eclipse, which means a profound, um, transmutation of energy, um, is on the horizon. Um, if you're willing to, you know, do the work and put work in and make room for it. Um, but once your planetary ruler, Jupiter, leaves uh, Aries and enters Taurus on the 16th, uh, the next 13 months after that, you'll feel like uh, you suddenly have um, to hit the brakes after a period of, you know, going really, really fast, getting a lot of things done, like nonstop work and stuff. So give your time, yourself time to adjust um, to get, you know, on a slower pace and study after everything that you've been uh, you know, working and rushing and, you know, frantically doing um, previously. So good luck to you, Saggies. Okay, we got one dropout card already. Um, I am a Sagittarius, so. Oh, wow. Uh, you are, if you are in any way, shape, or form connected with a goddess figure, you're going to want to make sure that you uh, rely on her and listen to her. She's going to be there to support you, guide you, help you. Um, and if you are not uh, familiar with a, a goddess figure that's okay you can just go with source uh spirit god uh whatever resonates with you it's fine it's just saying that that mother aspect is going to be here for you that divine mother um supporting you as you try to support yourself also watch out for anybody who may come in and want to cause problems including yourself sometimes we tend to mess things up for ourselves whether that be through uh procrastination or uh you know, just second guessing, uh, anything like that. Just be careful that you're not falling into that trap. Again, we see a lot of magic, outer magic happening for, for Sagittarius uh, this month. So a lot of changes going on. Again, trying to make sure that you're staying balanced, keeping your feet on the ground as all this goes on. And there's going to be some endings happening. Okay. And what we know that with every ending, there's a new beginning. And so, you know, uh, these endings are a time to transform into something new. That's what this is. That's what, that's what happens when uh, we look at like that Phoenix energy of the Phoenix dies, um, but then rises again from the ashes. So we've got that energy going on as well. Uh, and you just want to be careful that you don't uh, let your head go to negative spaces and most definitely do not listen to anybody uh, outside of you that may have something negative to say to you. Um, you are going to know through trusting yourself and loving yourself that you don't need this negativity around you. So just make sure that you're being aware of that as well um, so that you can take on this new in a positive light and it doesn't matter what any naysayers may have to say. So, there you Definitely. go. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, pretty heavy for Sagis, but, you know, like I said, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, so they are just, like, inherently lucky. Like, they, I mean, they, things can go, obviously, go wrong in anyone's life, regardless of the sign, but their archetype, but just the, the, just the fact that they're ruled by Jupiter, they have, like, a higher knowledge, um, they're fire signs, so they have that spirituality, and also it's, like, they have just, like, this lucky, like, 
things should, you know what I mean? Like things just happen to turn around for them. You know, they have like the good luck thing on their side always. So, so yeah, good luck, Saggies. Uh, next, we have Capricorn, Capricorn Rising. Uh, Capricorn, this month will illuminate the people you can trust and the people you must uh, peacefully release from your life. Um, as one of the most loyal, stubborn signs of the zodiac, eclipses could bring up feelings of discomfort, particularly lunar eclipses, um, which is occurring on the 5th of May. So change is happening in your life, whether you're ready or not. In case, uh, in your case, your friendship sector is highlighted um, during this eclipse. So uh, you might have some frenemies you're no longer going to be wanting to you know, or they're going to be revealed to you some kind of like, you know, people that you're kind of cool with, but not, you know, frenemies. So, um, including times when you're, um, I, I don't know when you it just, it's a good time for you to kind of like weed, weed them out right from your life. Jupiter, the planet of luck enters your, um, the, the your fellow earth sign Taurus on the 16th. And this could be a signal to, um, have a fresh start in some kind of romantic relationship. Um, the next 13 months are ideal for prioritizing, um, going on dates, um, finding a new partner or with your partner or just a potential partner or taking yourself on, a, um, taking yourself out more, just, you know, spending some money on yourself and some time with yourself, but you've been pouring uh, so much energy into your career so that, that you may not realize, uh, how much people, um, you know, want to spend time with you. So, cause you're, you're putting so much time into work, which is so much, uh, Capricorn kind of thing. So, um, your mission this month is to allow yourself to receive more love um, by others, by yourself, um, with in, with intent and um, and discernment. So good luck to you, Capricorns. And isn't that just like always the theme for Capricorns? They're always like the boss of the zodiac. Like their their um, their archetype is so much like a CEO, like get the job done kind of a. I love Capricorn suns and risings. I think that they're awesome, and they're always like the ones that you want on your on your side. They're the ones that are like not playing around, you know play by the rules kind of a sign so right awesome okay. right. i don't know if he froze or not yeah so good I, luck so Capricorn. I, lost I lost one camera but it looks like the other camera is still here okay okay good so um let me know can you still hear me though yeah i can hear you okay good all right so we'll just roll with that all right all right capricorn let's see what we have for you all right there's one fallout all right and your fallout is all about balance okay so it's, it's going to be all about balance um as well making sure that you um are really loving yourself and paying attention to um you know your emotions okay so don't let other people like upset you or bring you down, you really have to balance out like the energy that you give to other people as well as what you give to yourself and make sure that you're loving yourself and being true to yourself so that you're not just always giving, giving, giving and not getting back. Um, you want to be very careful of that. Um, and so as you're, you're learning what's really going on and what, what your true balance is within your life and, and your focus right now, as you're learning to release things that, and things and people that need to be released, you can have a tendency to get, uh, you know, upset about that. And, and it's understandable, but just remember that it's really what's best for you. Um, and don't let the negativity override your intuition because intuitively you're going to know it's the right thing, um, that it's time to move forward and release the old and, and anything in the past, um, and really start focusing on caring for yourself and making sure that all your relationships have a balance and that they bring you joy. And that they're not, people aren't um, dependent, so dependent on you without you getting anything in return from that relationship. Um, and trust your intuition. You'll know. You'll know. And even though it might bring you uh, a little bit of heartache, um, it's definitely the right thing and you'll know that. And just don't don't let the, the negativity or the sadness that you feel override your intuition. Because I think sometimes we have a tendency to let relationships linger and, and friendships linger that we know we shouldn't intuitively we know that it's done but we're just afraid of the sadness and the pain so we don't let go um so really try to not do that go ahead and trust yourself and love yourself enough to to let those things go and focus forward on the on the on the good that's coming your way definitely all right 
All right, good luck, Capricorn. Okay, so for Aquarius Sun, Aquarius Rising. Uh, Aquarius, um, Pluto, known to a signal transformation, has been in your sign since March 7th. And on the first of the month, it begins a five-month retrograde. Um, it'll be retrograde in Aquarius until June 11th. And then it'll re after Aquarius until January 2024. So uh, the month of May is therefore um, the last full moon that Pluto is in your sign until next year. So if you're feeling like you're experiencing um, a cosmic rite of passage, you very much are. The Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse that happens on May 5th, four days after Pluto retrograde begins. So then on the 7th, Venus will leave your fellow air sign Gemini and enter Cancer for four weeks. So all this watery sign energy in the cosmos may uh, initially uh, make you feel uncomfortable because it means that you'll have to face um, your emotions, your innermost uh, you know, feelings and needs. Uh, but with your planetary ruler Saturn currently in Pisces, you've been teaching yourself how to view uh, vulnerability as a supportive um, you know, way, uh, you know, strength for yourself. And um, you just want to consider the month of May a great opportunity to get in touch with your feelings. And for an air sign, especially Aquarius, I want to say all air signs because they are, um, they're known for their intellect and their, you know, their, um, the way that they communicate with others, just they're, they're not really high in the, um, you know, the feelings kind of sector. So I would say that this is definitely a good, good month for Aquarius to get in touch with, you know, how they're feeling about things themselves, the other people, and just, it's going to be a, a total, uh, it's going to be a very, very much a, an awakening for them um, emotionally. So good luck to you, Aquarius. Well, I think that explains. So my daughter is an Aquarius, and starting yesterday, she just was like, not stop whining. Like, I cannot <laughs> get her to stop. She was having a meltdown literally about everything from the moment she got up. Literally yeah. It's, up. Whether it's it was. Fun. She missed her baby. She she couldn't find her baby doll, and she wanted <laughs> to wear her certain clothes. And it was oh, a meltdown okay. over the clothes. It was a meltdown. I mean, literally everything. And I was just like, "What is with you today? You are literally." She's, not normally, like, uh, she's not normally very emotional like that. Yeah, I, mo but I was thinking of my sister, and she was like not emotional at all um, growing up. So I, this is definitely the energy is, is definitely going to be pulling that those emotions out of them. So yeah, especially if you have Aquarius children, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Well, it explains it. She just really can't help it. I just have to hold on. And get through. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have for you, Aquarius, sun and rising. All right, so we definitely have the uh, changes happening, transformations happening, um, but these can be very magical and powerful if you let them be. Um, so, you know, this is this is not like the big, huge life changes. Um, we're not looking at that here, like in some others, but we are looking at some internal transformations and changes happening because, again, we're looking at the alchemist here. Um, so there's an opportunity for what you're feeling and experiencing and uh, allow it to um, allow it to change you, you know, get in touch with those emotions and see where you end up. Very much try to go with the flow here. Don't resist. Don't try to push back. Don't try to um, hold those emotions in. Uh, you really just want to try to go with the flow and let it go. Um, you're going to feel very um wishy-washy uh and indecisive and kind of like i don't know what's happening um and you're gonna try to you know be mentally strong and try to just push through all this uh flowing that we have happening um and you know it's okay that you don't understand and i know that i think that i think that's hard um for air signs if they don't understand something and why it's happening um but you're just just Keep focusing forward. Know that this is just a period of time that you're going through. Try not to resist. Try not to fight it. Definitely don't hold those emotions in. Just let them go. And you know that the unknown is coming from this. So that's the best way that you can try to understand it is through the information that we're sharing for this month um, and just look forward to future times. So you'll make it through. It's just going to be uh, emotional. <laughs> 
Yeah, and they, they are so logical. I mean, they're they're so like, you know, they're very smart. They're very intelligent. So just knowing that your emotions, everything that you're going through, I mean, intellectually, you should just know, like, it's a process. And just like, you know, when you're in it, it kind of sucks. But it's like knowing that it's what's going to be a result of it, it should give you strength and just trust the process. Yeah, exactly. Okay, finally, we have Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising. Um, Pisces, the start of Pluto retrograde on May 1st, followed by the Scorpio lunar eclipse on the 5th, will take you on an intense journey of self-reflection. Your sector of spirituality, closure, and healing is activated by Pluto retrograde in Aquarius. And since Saturn, the planet challenge, is in your sign until 2026, you're, um, you're um, taking in cosmic lessons and uh, with more um, flexibility and agility. Um, with the Scorpio eclipse activating the sector of expansion and philosophy, it may be a good time for you to ask for forgiveness and cut cords with your past um, to make room for new beginnings. Um, now, Jupiter enters Taurus on the 16th, and that may present you with um, that fresh start. Mercury retrograde will have ended two days prior on the 14th. And even though there will still be a two-week uh, post-shadow period where you'll be feeling a little disoriented um, because of the effects of the retrograde, um, the energy from um, Jupiter's shift into Taurus will um just will it'll harmonize well with your uh, Piscean nature, helping you feel more grounded, purposeful, and committed to the endeavors you've set in place for the year. Um, and I love this for you. I'm a Pisces, and I am so all for it. So good luck to you, Pisces. Pisces rising. All right. Yeah, my sister's a Pisces. It uh, kind of explains what's maybe going on a little bit with her. So yeah. And we had a bunch of cards fall out. So let's see what that's about. Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. Wow. Okay. All right, Pisces. Um, you're going to want to try to get balanced within yourself um, and within your surroundings um, and with the people around you. So it's starting off by saying, just try to find a good footing and a balance for yourself. Um, you're going to have to really take a hard pause to just take the time to figure out where you fit in everything. Um, it's almost like you need to just analyze everything in your life and, and see where you've got to get a little bit more balance. So this is looking at everything from relationships, um, family, career, uh, yourself, your spirituality, um, every aspect of your life, just taking a minute to say, am I balanced within and without? Um, so that's going to be very important. And it's saying that you have to do this. Um, this is not something that you're going to be able to swim around and get out of doing. Oh, it's going to be something that's, that's a hideous crazy. looking part. That, that guy looks horrible. <laughs> this is the part that says you haven't been doing what you know you need to do. So it's oh, time to do it. Oh, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, so he's the one that's saying you can't get around this one. You got to do it. You got to do the work this time. Um, but you I, hate that know what he's talking about. I hate that I know what he's talking about, too, because I'm a Pisces. I'm like, oh, no, he wants me to like, just, yeah. Oh, I don't want to see him. <laughs> exactly. But there will be a boost of energy to support this. So you'll feel like that energy around you saying, okay, I can do this. I know I don't really want to, but I can. You're going to get that boost in the energy. Um, and, yeah, definitely time to communicate, talk things out, talk things through, um, and connect with people. Um, maybe it feels like connecting with people from the past, um, not for ongoing, but just for uh uh, clarification and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like finalizing. Um, oh, what's the word? It's like escaping me at this moment. Um, closure. Okay. <laughs> Making those connections and that communication just long enough to do that. So this is the fallout. I'm going to pull a few more. Um, but these are the fallout cards of what you can expect for this month. Um, 
Okay, and so it's also going to be a time of really focusing in on your dreams. What is it that you want? How does this balancing that you're doing fit in with everything that you want? Um, making connections, keeping those friends close, like really looking at where am I with my friendships and the relationships in my life and which ones do I really value over which ones I don't and kind of like taking an inventory of your friendships. Um, it's saying pay attention. There's going to be a lot of signs that are going to show up this month for you um, and just pay attention to those signs. And um, there's also a feeling of the, the opportunity to get a lot of um, truths revealed and honesty stepping forward um, and just stay open to it. Um, don't try to close off or be like, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Like, don't put your head in the sand. Like, really, like, say, okay, I'm open to, to learning and discovering truths that maybe uh, have, have been, I've been in the dark about um, up till this point. So it's going to be like a, a lot of uh, revealing coming coming uh, out this month. So, yeah. That sounds about right. Good luck, Pisces. All right. So, you guys, this was um, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. I think we are getting down a good process here. Um, and just so you guys know, I will be listing uh, on the website. You guys can check it out. And also um, in the info that will be with posted with this uh, recording, I'll go ahead and highlight uh, Jessica has given me all of the um, events for the month that are going on and happening. So um, we went over them all with an each individual um sign that we went through but i will be uh posting up uh, an overview so you can get that in writing and then i'll also be throwing in a few little magical tips and fun things um to go along with that so we awesome. hope that you have enjoyed this jessica do you have anything else you want to add no just thank you so much for um for having me and yeah you could check me out at uh, starfishastrology at gmail.com if you want to get a birth chart reading or a uh, yearly forecast yeah, and I highly, highly, highly uh, recommend them because I'm telling you, I was blown away. It's just so spot on. Um, so if this, if these are resonating with you, um, these monthly ones that we're doing, getting it personalized to you based on your birth chart. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Yes, like it's huge. So if this resonates even a little bit. Yeah, you can't yeah. even imagine how like spot on and amazing it would be to to get the the individual like your own done yeah. with her. So yeah, definitely so. worth it. I highly recommend it. So, um, but yeah, you can check us out. Um, check out the uh, what I mentioned as far as having all the information in writing that will be on thewitchsource.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram. Find us there, um, and we'd love to hear from you. Thewitchsource at gmail.com. So, any questions, you can hit us up there. And until next time, thank you all for being here. And thank you, Jessica, bye, so everyone. much for doing this. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Stay bye. magical. Bye. <laughs>